Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We are here and once again it is our a great pleasure to be in your reality. So we are pleased that we have a good crowd here, an attentive group, and that you have uh, in the last hour or so reconsidered how aware you think you really are. Welcome. We are gathered for a moon afternoon, as we call it, uh, at the Dancing Moon in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. We are known to stir things up and to broadcast a, a very uh, live uh, frequency here uh, that travels uh, telepathically all over the world. And we are here to explore unexplained mysteries from ancient worlds to modern times and to continue our uh, exploration of excellence in consciousness. You are uh, the committed, the curious, uh, and perhaps the confused. Uh, that is fine. Uh, we would say that uh, one of the great themes of this year, and you haven't even hit the big stuff yet, uh, this is a year of confusion. You are uh, like many lanes of traffic headed in a certain direction, and suddenly the lanes are merging. And uh, it's not so easy, as you well know, to merge many, many lanes. Uh, you know, in China, uh, they have uh, parts of their road system uh, where they have big problems. They get 50 lanes. Can you imagine? Uh, locally, you have eight lanes here and there that merge 50 lanes merging. China has been known over the years uh, to have uh, what you call gridlock and traffic jams that last for days. We ask you, are you, any of you, when you set out to go to work or on holiday, does it ever enter your mind that you might get stuck in a, a three-day traffic jam? Uh, probably not. But the people who are going to airports today to just lollygag in and get their flight are finding that uh, in the last few weeks they've uh, been detained and the lines are amazingly long and so many people merging and, and nothing seems to happen. It's creating a gridlock. This is systemic and a reflection, a symbolic example of what's happening all over the world. We'll talk about this, but if there were road signs for what's ahead, they would say, people of the world, caution, chaos ahead, slow down. You get it? Mm -hmm. Good. And that chaos can be substituted for confusion. They are almost one in the same. And as always is the case, there are indicators in the heavens that uh, show the people of Earth, and we as we deal with you and study your Earth, uh, what some of the uh, extenuating factors are. And just to cover the astrology very quickly, uh, yesterday you had a full moon in the early degrees of Sagittarius, conjunct Mars. So there's some energy, some drive uh, to figure things out, uh, to uh, get the bigger picture. Sagittarius is the bigger picture, Mars is passion. So this is a day after a full moon. And very powerful. You're still in that vortex of, of getting the bigger picture. And when you get the bigger picture, friends, it's not simply to pass the time. It's so that you can advance your awareness, assist your soul's growth through your own incarnation on Earth, and make changes that enhance your life. So slow down, caution, confusion ahead. The astrological impacts are tomorrow, Mercury goes direct 
So for the last three weeks, you've been in a Mercury retrograde, uh, thinking about things, perhaps things a bit befuddled, you have to redo things, so that things will move a little more forward uh, this upcoming week. Uh, but still, uh, you are under the larger umbrella of the three Saturn-Neptune squares. The first one was last year, 2015, at Thanksgiving. Everyone, in their mind, go back to Thanksgiving. It's quite easy to do. We say go back to Thanksgiving, and the mind usually pops something up. Oh, sometimes it's turkey, gravy. Uh, it can be anything. Where you went, the prepping of food, how you felt afterwards, full, disappointed, satisfied, encounters with people, uh, global stuff. That's when it started, the confusion. And the confusion that you are under for, from last Thanksgiving through the entirety of this year is you are challenged, each of you, to figure out what's real and what's an illusion. And you know the radios, the radio people are full of admitting now that uh, there's so much fake news. Uh, even a Facebook is now called fake book. Yes, because they are, they are oh, everyone's so surprised that they are controlling the news feed. But the news is completely fake. And it has been shown that there are so many, quote, special effects, Hollywood-type events that have been orchestrated and perpetrated on the masses to create confusion, fear, division, separation. And what does this do? It throws water onto the electrical body, and it stops you from figuring things out. Now, the good news is that all of this purposeful discombobulation, this purposeful uh, separating of people and confusing you and, and, and all of this, is easily recognizable as a small cadre of people who have the power of the media, which is everything right now, and they manipulate people and people willingly Sign up for this. Why? Because they are addicted. Because the media and the devices and all of this are keyed to pleasure centers in the brain. And even though people may not think they're getting pleasure, this inability to separate yourself from the device is actually a sign of addiction, very desperate addiction. We'll leave it at that. but. Uh, those of our students and listeners know that we are no fan of the dumbing down of people, which is happening through basically uh, the ubiquitous spread of cell phones, whatever you want to call these devices, tablets, pads, phones. It's tricking people into thinking that they're learning something, when actually Studies are showing that uh, college graduates are hopelessly ignorant after getting $50,000 in debt, but you would have to be ignorant to create $50,000 worth of debt when you are 22 years old. It's a sign of ignorance, and it's a sign of ignorant parents that allow this. So there's a tremendous cognitive failure that is going on worldwide, worldwide. Another worldwide issue is, uh, we'll say it in just uh, real uh, colloquial terms, the natives are restless. You are the natives, people everywhere are the natives. They're restless. They are ready to rumble. They are opposed to the massive government controls that are coming down in every country all over the world. We've mentioned that uh, the people of America, America, USA, uh, may be the very last to figure things out because you are in a huge bubble here, massive bubble. And of course your president and your authorities keep giving you disinformation uh, on the state of the economy, on the state of everything. It's all 
uh, a planned illusion to get you very confused and to get you to uh, not think. One of the goals of the Anunnaki and the current manipulators today is to have people dumb enough not to understand what's going on, yet capable enough to physically maintain themselves and go to work. We would say, in the large case, they are completely succeeded because they have convinced people that they know what's going on by these devices, but people have never been less clear and more divided and more confused. And to be fair, to be very fair, the amount of knowledge that you must know to understand what's going on in the world is massive. And you are not going to figure it out from the internet. You are creators. You are genetically engineered through time. You are the offspring of ancient earth dwellers, ancient, 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 and you are a product of genetic hybrid engineering from Anunnaki and others. Different races were designed for different sky gods, to use that term, to make certain that one batch of gods knew which people were theirs. Enki, one of the uh, let's say brothers of the uh, uh, Anunnaki realm, Enki and his brother Enlil. Uh, Enlil was uh, decreed, uh, just to review, the commander of space and air, and he was given, uh, let's say, the Middle East in their, their, their settlements of Earth. Enki was given Africa. And Later on, Enki's country was China, and Enki's son was sent to the uh, Western Hemisphere, and one of his sons uh, created then the entirety of the civilizations, what you call south of the border, from U.S. point of view, uh, Mexico, Central America, and the uh, mining developments in South America. This old planetary contention about which batch of people belong to which gods and who's been engineered to do what and who can be smart and who can't and who's a worker and who's not, all of this is now ready to be understood. You know, during the 1930s, 40s, 50s, while many secret programs were being developed, uh, through Anunnaki influence, of course, by all means, uh, and others, uh, space, uh, space dwellers, or celestials, we like to call them. Long ago, they were called space brothers, a kind of a friendly term, but we just go with the neutral term celestials. Some are good, some are very bad. Uh, you would, just so for your own understanding, your own morality, your own bottom line, your traditional values of right and wrong, good and not good, and the way you live these values determine the kind of energies you attract to yourself. If you are corruptible, cheater, liar, killer, stealer, ooh, the lower vibrational entities, the celestials, they like to hook you in, reward you, and then uh, use you as a pawn. This happens from the poorest of people, the no ones out in the deserts of lands you cannot even imagine, up to the highest portals of power, those sitting on thrones. No one is exempt from the soul's evolution. And so your foibles and your good choices make for good storytelling. Today, things are coming to a head. A few years ago, you had the end of what was called the long count calendar in terms of uh, uh, December 2012. Everyone held their breath and then let it out slowly and said, oh good, nothing happened. 
But in retrospect, dear friends, in a few mere years, look what has happened. The corruption, the greed, the mind control, the black is white and white is black, is going full force. Why would there be such a great press for chemtrails and confusion to put you down and to, to make you so disempowered? Why? Because you are ready to pop and you are popping. And for those who can see the truth, it's like a candle with a steady flame that even the force of a hurricane is not going to blow out. Because once you start to figure things out, once the flame is lit and you begin to put the pieces together and accept that even if it feels like you've been a victim and even if you can point to all these situations where you have been held back it is your own mind who has believed these things and it is the mind that is the solution and we implore each of you to accept that you are a creator and that reality conforms to your beliefs. And what you believe is what you are going to create. And if you believe that you are downtrodden and that you have no fortune, then you are going to be downtrodden with no fortune. If you believe that there's a spark of cleverness in you, and that no matter what you look like and what you are, you can proceed on your own intention, clear thinking, desire and willpower. The forces of existence read this and they respond. This is why it is easy to separate those who want to move forward and those who are befuddled. And understand, there are many today who are very befuddled due to karmic circumstances, uh, things that they have set out in other lifetimes, and the boomerang had to return home, or the chickens came home to roost. And uh, at various points of life, they involved in a situation that was less than ideal. This, of course, is soul learning. And you have choices always presented to you to advance yourself, to make a choice, to do better or to fall prey to darker forces. So this is a little bit of a welcoming uh, to you. And uh, just to comment on some of the things you were discussing, the trumpet, as we call him, that's uh, the Donald, uh, we call him the trumpet. Although one must admit that when he strikes a pose at times, uh, probably they started calling him the Donald because he has a similar resemblance a bit to that uh, character from uh, post-World War II, uh, Donald Duck. <laughs> Just to throw a bit of humor in there, you know we like to get a laugh. If you can't laugh, then it's difficult. If you can laugh, then you can ameliorate or lessen uh, the effects of situation. So the trumpet uh, meets with uh, Henry Kay. Henry Kay uh, of the famous uh, MK Ultra uh, handler, uh, Henry Kay, who's uh, like Forrest Gump. He, he's been there everywhere, every situation. There's Henry Kay, uh, and he's uh, a Gemini, so uh, you are now in the sun is in Gemini. And a Gemini has two sides, just remember that. And the Donald is a Gemini. He has two sides. And let's say that uh, if Henry Kay is meeting with the Donald, some very big things are coming down. This does not mean that the Donald is going to uh, fall prey uh, to the controllers. But the controllers are playing a big game. And we ask you this. Can the many overthrow the few without creating a bloody uprising? Can the few who trick you and control you and use <coughs> all manner of secret technologies, can the few that are arising to awareness rise even further 
and how to think this process. Because you are not going to win by going to war. And you are not going to win anything through bloody revolutions, which <coughs> have a great propensity to come forward this year. There are those who want this to occur, so that then a further lockdown can be approached to a country that has many, many guns. And then there's the Donald. He was just supported by the National Rifle Association. Pay attention, dear friends, not so much to the politics, but to the symbolism. The symbolism will teach you more, because no one is really telling you the truth. And the media is running it all anyways. And remember, the media wants eyes and ears and uh, dollars from the pocketbook. So we have much more to share with you. And of course, uh, the good news is uh, we're going to have a holiday weekend soon. Summer's around the corner, and uh, the world is, as usual, full of beauty. Appreciate that beauty, and rest your mind on beauty. Make beauty. Enjoy beauty. Enjoy the simplicity of life. As we said, the Saturn-Neptune square, June 7th, 17th, sorry, 12 degrees of mutables, Pisces, uh, Sagittarius. If you are going to be traveling in June, you'd best do some very excellent clear intentions. This third square it is September, mid September, around the 19th or some such, perhaps 10 degrees or something mutable. Both of these squares highlight the summer traveling season and the convention season. Our advice to you is. If you think three days trapped in an airport is outrageous, how about a few weeks? You are in systemic breakdown. You are in the people at the top pretending they don't know what's going on. But they are working to create chaos. This is not an easy summer for travel, and particularly foreign travel. France, not so good. And then if you are going to go into some of the areas where the migrants have, uh, have come in, where uh, all of the people from uh, Northern Africa, Middle East, uh, all along the Mediterranean there, there's a hotbed of confusion. So uh, rethink perhaps what you are doing or be prepared for long waits, long delays, unless you are going to be able to turn on that blue beam special and weave your way or through all this. It's going to take exceptional, exceptional intention and awareness this summer because there are, there's a lot of confusion ahead. All right, so we've given you uh, that. Let's move to questions. And uh, as usual, we ask you to state your first name loud and clear and to ask a question uh, that uh, will get everyone thinking. And of course, we uh, will tell jokes now and again. And uh, if you would chuckle, uh, even politely, at some of our jokes, it would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> it's not so much for our ego. It's just that uh, when you laugh, uh, you boost your immune system and you enhance your body's chakras. And that is why sometimes we like to be ridiculous, because there's a gift in it for all of us. All right, so who is going to ask the first question, loud and clear? Is it going to be you, David? Yes, uh, I'm going to go on Very the... Uh, I just he is the traditional first question, David. so we let him start it off. All right. And I, I just cut Gene off, so... Uh, Let's make it good. It's going to be good. All right, and Gene. She just it. laid it I'm, out I'm there. Make it good. Gene after I'm done, okay? All right, good. Um, Second baton. So the... My question is, and it kind of goes off what you were saying, um, I had a conversation with your vehicle a few weeks ago about these uh, popping up of airport delays. I think Seattle was getting it bad, Denver, Orlando, and now they're just like popping up everywhere. And, you know, it seems like the last time I bought a ticket, do you guys remember you pay that nice security fee? Yes, you pay a huge fee yeah. to uh, what's called the 
security people so or some such. So and there's more people traveling, so there's more fees than ever. So what does this say to you? Well, my question is, uh, and my, the, your vehicle's reaction was, they're looking for somebody or something. Um, I think that could be part of it, but it also it looks like what they're trying to do is condition the people that were just nothing more than cattle in a line. Slow you down, yes, yes. So I guess I'll throw it back to you guys. What is going on? Because they could solve this instantly, if con and Congress has said nothing, at least as we're aware of. Why isn't this being made a priority? Well, there are many things that are not being made a priority. There are many things that a politico comes out and mandates you have to do this, and yet things that really need attention are ignored. Uh, on many levels, this is the, the highest level. These are the breakdowns of the system. On another level, these are purposely planned obsolescence or uh, throw cogs in the wheel to disempower people, to make them irritable, uh, to create more chaos and confusion. And there's no more perfect time to befuddle people than these months ahead. You are highly susceptible to being confused and being used and manipulated. And it's going to take extra effort to go towards Saturn rather than Neptune and get really real. So, and a lot of people's ideals are busted. Uh, you are into the traveling season. And another level of this is, is that you are being prepped to stay home. Next year, Saturn is still going to be uh, in Sagittarius. Next year is going to be even less traveling uh, than there is this year. These are, you call them social engineering, social experiments that a few people mandate, and you uh, take a whole bunch of people, and you lay them off in certain areas, uh, and uh, you know everyone's a part of something, but no one's got the bigger picture. And yet, the full moon of yesterday is about gathering uh, the bigger picture. So it's more planned chaos and confusion, David. And yes, when you slow things down in certain areas, uh, it does facilitate scanning each person if you are looking for someone. Now, who would anyone be looking for? RT Intel, perhaps? RT Intel is our name for what is commonly known as AI, or artificial intelligence. And if RT Intel has to uh, uh, negotiate uh, through all this uh, or other, uh, let's say, beings that they are looking for, it slows things down and allows certain people to stand in line and watch others. There's always many, many reasons for certain events. Now we'll go to Jean. What is your question and welcome? Thank you. This is Jean. <laughs> Good. Um, I was just wondering, we just touched on a little bit with um, the recent passing of uh, this uh, entertainer Prince. Prince, yes. Um, I thought one of the other interesting things about the timing, one it was, and you can give us some feedback why it was important or the significance of it being on Queen Elizabeth's birthday, why he would pass that day or be facilitated that he passed that day. Because I thought it was interesting, he had recently broken with the uh, traditional structure of the music industry with his um, recording uh, uh, publishing company taking his power and control back over his music, he seemed to also be in a long phase of taking control back over his life in general, his thoughts and thinking. He, he started to sound like someone who was studying the information that you and your channel um, had been teaching for decades. He may have and he even, didn't he have a photo of him with the word slave written yes, on his face? He yes, he did. And but another interesting thing, the day he died, he seemed to understand um, he had a long-standing issues with uh, debilitating chronic pain, in which he had been relying on the medical community to manage. But he realized that was another maybe form of slavery. He, his body had become so conditioned and dependent on the drug he was taking 
he was taking steps to get himself off of it and maybe go in an alternative direction, which he had done for his diet. He was a vegan. He was uh, perhaps looking for an alternative direction for his health care, his pain management, and it had passed away the day before he was putting that plan into place. Alone, mysteriously, somewhat mysteriously, alone in his, you know, uh, complex compound where he lived. We'll give a few comments here. Much of the entertainment industry, along with the sports industry, have been subjected to one form or another of MK Ultra mind control cult participation. It is nigh impossible, once you have been subjected for long-term uh, brain fragmentation and programmed to be exceptional. Understand MKUltra does not simply create multiple personality disorder and many alters or different front personalities uh, that can switch. And Prince was known for switching. He would go from the falsetto down to very deep singing. Switching is part of MKUltra. It is like punching a different program on your computer. And MKUltra, mind control to the ultra, is based on roughly understanding that the body is like a computer and stores various programs. And you can, if you are so programmed, someone can touch your little pinky and you, a different altar comes forward. Then someone touches your elbow and another altar comes forward. Nonetheless, it is nigh impossible to break out. Uh, even you have a woman named Roseanne Barr. Do you remember her? Yeah. She was responsible for what we call the slobification. Uh, we made that word up. The slobification of uh, uh, the lifestyle and the dress code in the U.S. So even Roseanne Barr, who claimed uh, quite publicly, everyone's under MK Ultra mind control. I'm the only one that wants to talk about it. They're all frightened to death. Yes, because if you attempt to break out, you often can be killed. And Prince, let's say, was getting too smart for his britches. He was talented and smart enough and had enough uh, public, let's say, uh, uh, backing and charisma uh, to be an effective communicator. He was a threat, worth more dead than alive. And of course, uh, as we've been pointing out, and Jean, you certainly uh, were aware, uh, that the window of sacrifice and volatility on the planet usually kicks in from April, April 15 through May number one. Uh, remember that uh, Chernobyl, 1986, blew in that window. Many, many, many volatile events have happened uh, between April 15 and May number one. So uh, Queen's birthday is uh, one day after Hitler's birthday. Hitler's birthday is April 20th, and then the Queen, uh, QE2, she's uh, 90 on April 21, then Earth Day is the next day. A few years ago in that window, you had the Deepwater Horizon blow up, etc. You've had so many things. So Prince, serendipitously, is uh, demised in his own castle uh, in Minnesota, uh, the same day the Queen has her birthday. What a coincidence, a prince dies on the Queen's birthday. And then the queen, where does she go on her birthday? To Cairo, of all places. Cairo. Cairo that, um, in certain terms, it's understood that Cairo is uh, Mars, named for Mars. And then, of course, it was not so long ago that the, at the death of Nelson Mandela, that it is reported that uh, the Anunnaki god Marduk, Mar, Mar, Duke, Duke University down the road there, uh, Marduk, the old Anunnaki god, son of Enki, was crowned king of Africa. 
at Mandela's memorial service. Hmm. And then the queen goes to Cairo, which is called Mars, on and around her birthday. Hmm. And then a temple of Baal, right in that window is Baal, meaning Marduk, is dedicated in London? Folks, climate change is afoot. David, what does that mean? Uh, big deceptions. Climate change is code. Return of... Uh, the return of the Anunnaki and Nibiru. Yes. And this is why 200 countries, 190 some odd countries, also met during that window. And they came to the UN and they signed various treaties, and each one agreeing that, there, that climate change, from Obama on down to the Nobel Prize, not Nobel Prize, Oscar winner, uh, uh, make the statement to the world there is no more important issue in these times than climate change. And then Obama hops in his uh, super polluting airplane and flies here, there, and everywhere. Airplanes pollute way more than your automobiles do. Anyone notice the disconnect? No, because everyone's too busy on the devices. Looking at pornography or watching their little kids take Jean Benet Ramsey type lessons. What was appalling in the Jean Benet Ramsey case 20 years ago? She's resurfaced uh, on the tabloids and her pictures are coming up, so we bring this up. What was appalling to sexualize a five or six little year old girl and to teach her how to do hoochie coochie dancing, we are being very polite here, uh, is now commonplace. What has happened to your culture, friends? In front of your eyes, what has happened to your culture and why do you allow it? We don't know if that's something you can answer, but it's certainly something that Prince eventually was attempting to convey. And of course, he was controlled from childhood, you must understand this, as many of these people are. When they are born poor and they have talent, they are taken into these programs, especially if they are abused, abused children are very desirable. Why? Because they dissociate. And if you dissociate, then you are already a candidate for being programmed. Dissociation means you check out and cannot deal with a trauma. And if you are sexualized when you are a young child, of course you're going to check out. You don't know how to deal with it. You are supposed to be relying on parental authority and protection. All right, who else has a question? Can I follow up real quick? Um, uh, go ahead. Um, what was the significance? I realize there must have been speaking to somebody that understood the significance of the color. Um, that Prince was the purple one. But somehow on his death, it was like oh, somehow the purple was being associated with Queen Elizabeth. It was very. Purple is traditionally uh, the color of royalty. Mm -hmm. And it, there was a time, Jean, this is a very good ob observation on your part, um, there was a time when it was not an easy color to produce. Uh, the reds could be produced from berries, do you understand? But purple was uh, more elusive until a specific mollusk was discovered, uh, not the octopus, but some other mollusk, that gave off a dark purple inky substance that was very, very rare and difficult to achieve. So the, in the business of fabrics and, and creating dyes, a purple was reserved as a special color only for those of very high position, uh, or one could say it was associated with the Anunnaki. So his whole concept of purple rain, even though he may have appealed to the masses and people thought he was fixing them and saving them, 
prince was putting everyone under mind control who listened to his songs. He may be explaining what was going on, but understand people, music puts you into a trance. And once you are into a trance, if you are not cognizant of what is going on, you may be having a good time, but you are being dumbed down. So what looked like he was liberating people, he was not. He was taking them further under control. Look at how they all mourned him. And what did he really achieve? And how many rock and rollers died this year? And everyone's acting as if these rock and rollers did something for the planet. What did they do? Does anyone want to answer that? They didn't raise the vibration at all. They put you under mind control trances. So, so to be fair, when all these people mourn the rock and rollers, you are mourning those who create music and lyrics that put you deeper into a trance so that you can't think. Wake up, people. Wake up. Who has a question? Dan, welcome, loud and clear. Uh, and uh, Really loud. So, you know, uh, you're talking about the astrological positions right now and like the effects that they're gonna have. And I was wondering if you all drew any connection between like, Pluto being in Capricorn and like all this uprising going on. Cause you know, the last time Pluto was in Capricorn, uh, the American Revolution happened, the French Revolution happened, and the right of terror. You are, that's a good, uh, uh, good point that you are bringing up, and for the last uh, five years, uh, Dan, Dan it is, yes, uh, we have been talking about this uh, structural collapse and the uprising of people as the planet Uranus, which uh, takes 84 years to zoom around the zodiac. Uh, so that means when you are 84 years old, uh, Pluto or uh, Uranus uh, comes back to the place uh, it was when you were born, and most people don't live past 84. Between 80, 84, 85, the energy is too much for them because Uranus stirs things up and it, it calls for revolution and change, and it is in the sign of Aries. It moved in the sign of Aries uh, just uh, minutes after the Fukushima disaster in Japan. So you have been in... Uh, five years, six years, uh, Uranus squaring Pluto. Uranus has moved off from the square, but you are in the after effects of revolution, uh, rebellion, uh, uprising, revolt, restiveness, uh, rebelling against all authority. And then again, as you said, Capricorn, Pluto and Capricorn was last in this position uh, during the American uh, Revolution because Pluto, uh, zooms around the zodiac, uh, it takes a 248, 250 years. The moon zooms around the zodiac in 28 days. Yes. Just, if you are aware, folks, you'd better understand the movements of the heavens, otherwise you're not very aware. And of course, the world does not want you to understand those movements because then you would be smart. They want to keep you stupid looking at those devices. Now, so you are in as a world, and uh, certainly as the foundation of your country, you are in a, a Pluto return. It's not close yet, but it's closing in on it. The, you will find uh, that your bacon is being fried. That is a, a polite way of saying it. Um, between 2021, 2022, 2025, it will be quite disastrous in this country. Uh, many have said that whoever is elected in 2020 is going to be uh, the, the pivotal person uh, that everything will fall down around. But we are not diminishing that this election is any different. You are in the beginning of redefining a country whose principles stand on independence and freedom. And of course, that is so far away from how most people are living today. Most people are looking for a handout. And if the handout 
the government check does not arrive, whether it's social security, disability, or, or some manner of extras. If it does not arrive, people cannot survive. And even more than that, studies have shown, Dan, that uh, over half of America would be hard pressed to come up with four or five hundred dollars for an emergency. They don't have that kind of cash hanging around. If you don't have four or five extra hundred dollars stashed away uh, for a mini emergency, you are not very aware. And if you are still living in part poverty and the government supporting you and you've been investing in awareness, you are kidding yourself, you are delusional. And so this year, Dan, is going to, what you have that term, wheat from the chaff, men from the boys, however it goes, the sorting out, you know. Uh, middle of June is going to be a huge test on real versus illusion. And lots of people are going to spend an uncomfortable summer realizing that they have been invested in stupidity. And there's great potential for people smartening up, great potential. And, uh, but there's also, again, so much chaos and confusion ahead. And this is, again, part of the governmental breakup. Not just in the USA, but all over the world. As we said, the natives are restless. So how could this be avoided? It does not necessarily mean that because you are in a Pluto return, Pluto and Capricorn, uh, if you were, the country was honest and everything was running smoothly and people were encouraged to produce for themselves, to be responsible, to stop playing the role of victim and I'm, 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 I'm powerless to stop that, then the Pluto and Capricorn would be a reevaluation to a much higher level of uh, Pluto transformation, life death transformation, and uh, Capricorn doing a good job with integrity. Where there's honesty and integrity is the hallmark signature. Because you are nowhere near that, the Pluto return will probably create the splits and separation of America. You are already seeing it. Did not North Carolina stand up to uh, Obama and the Justice Department and say that if you want to tell us what to do about bathrooms, it has to go through legislature. Your country is based on legislation, not on some manner of imperial decree that not only has Obama been guilty of, he's a constitutional lawyer, or so he says. He has stepped on all of your constitutional rights, as had every president for, for decades before him. Many say that the only president that was willing to stand up to things was who? JFK. JFK, exactly. And he had a laundry list, miles long, of cheating on his wife. So there you have someone wanting to do the right thing in terms of banking and CIA and exposure and UFO and all of this. But yet he was constantly belittling and betraying his wife. She was doing the same thing to him. So what do you think? It's all an illusion, one big glamour. You've been tricked by the media. Jackie and John standing there with their children pose as if everything's fine. You know, the last 100 years with photography, well, perhaps longer, since the 1860s or some such, uh, photography, movies, all of this virtual reality, it has done nothing but confuse you. You are not the strong people and the clear thinkers and the visionaries that you used to be. Anything else, Dan? That's it. 
It's good that you understand astrology. Are you studying these things? Yes. Good. It is a good uh, uh, augmentation to understand cycles and patterns. And if you get good at it, it is always uh, nice to be able to uh, earn a living uh, by baking pies or offering uh, good advice. They are both very nurturing. You understand? Yes. Good. Who else has a question? Naila. Naila. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, you are a smart lady. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I, it, your vehicle said, mentioned that, uh, of course, we should. Um, no get, shoulds. We are to get rid of Good. cell phones and those uh, digital devices. Or at least use them minimally. Absolutely. Uh, my question is, in, in terms of communicating with others that need to get this information, this liberating information that you uh, have been dispensing, and I was thinking more specifically in terms of, say, the African American community that uh, typically has its head in the sand, is very religious, and won't listen to anything that even sounds like astrology or anything like that. Why do you think that is? A lot of conditioning and Good. Uh, in the DNA, you know, it's just it's ingrained. In the DNA, you are very right. It is ingrained, uh, and yet, all people can have a spark that can open them. And just to add this before you continue, years ago we said uh, when we began our work in uh, on May 18th, we entered your reality just a few days ago, but 1988. And uh, as people started waking up and showing up in, in droves, our vehicle, and we used to say, well, you are time-coded. And if everyone woke up at once, you could not be accommodated. Imagine a whole bunch of babies needing to be fed at once and only a few that can feed them. You follow? Yes. So even as you call the, the, the uh, African-American black community, uh, they may be very stuck. Uh, and they are conditioned and uh, clustering together to protect each other and to assure each other we are safe, we are okay, uh, it, it is like doing the familiar. But after a while, that too grows old and they too will be time-coded when it's time to awaken. You follow this? Yes. What is your question now? Well, basically, you've answered the question because the, the question had to do with what, how does one, uh, how do you communicate not using those vehicles? I mean, we are, everyone is everywhere, regardless of what nationalities we are. And we've taken to using the Facebooks and social media, the LinkedIn and so forth. Now we know that these things are just um, avenues for they are actually government. and all these things are designed to keep you in a fifth grade mentality can you remember fifth grade anyone <laughs> about 10 years old 11 years old you're not grown up yet but uh, the, the clicks and the who's who and this and you want friends but you're not sure who's going to be your friend and uh, it is all creating people, taking them back to more of an infantile, uh, adolescent type behavior. So how does one uh, communicate? First of all, if you have to have these devices, do not let them rule you. It's like having a drink. Can you have one drink without drinking the whole bottle? If you can't, and you are an alcoholic, then you have to admit it and put the darn cell phone away and get a landline and trust that when you are on the road that you can live without being constantly in touch with your family. This is all a social engineering game. Up until 10 years ago, everyone lived without being in touch all the time. People would go overseas for the summer and not talk to anyone because it was too much of a hassle to call. Now they can't go for five minutes. As soon as the airplane lands, hi, I'm landed. Hi, I'm going to the bathroom. Hi, I'm getting a hot dog. Hi, I've just ordered pizza instead. Uh, uh, oh, let me yelp this pizza review here. They were terrible. It, it, it's, this is stupid. Do you understand? Yes. All right, now, it's very important to understand that everything that you learn if you never say a word, you are broadcasting it. 
Everything that you are, you broadcast. That is why you get next to people who are weird and you say, ooh, it's a weird person, I don't want to be by them. They may never say a word. Everyone broadcasts who and what they are. As you become more aware, you, the energy starts to flow through you. And you vibrate, or you have a frequency that is a little quicker, it's more enhanced, it's um, a little more exciting, you would have a stronger aura, it would be in your energy field. And of course the very best way to communicate with people is one-on-one, -on -one, to have real conversations. Uh, and so, you know, the old-fashioned way used to be, hey, I, I came across this book. Here, read this book. People don't want to read books today. And so the globalists are very successful in getting you away from books. Because you see, with a book, you use your imagination and you can stop and think. And you ruminate. And then you go into soft focus and you change your brain waves. And this, of course, is very exciting. Uh, you could have people over for discussions and start to call in the higher forces and say, I want to help other people. I ask that my guides and higher forces of good intention from other dimensions work through me to help me uh, facilitate the awakening and the awareness of others. And I ask that they find me and that I am guided to speak to the right people at the right time. Start small and start with the idea that you are going to help people feel empowered and feel successful, whether they manifest 10 extra dollars or whether they make it through the winter without being sick because they decide they don't need to be sick anymore because they understand, ah, you mean I can believe I'm going to be well and I will be well? instead of believing, oh, I'm probably going to get sick this winter because the flu is going around. And then you build, you build on your intentions and your reputation. And you use the devices selectively, selectively, to augment what you are doing. You follow this? Because you see, when you are on the devices and you send people things on the devices to read all this stuff, and they read the devices and watch the devices, they don't stop and ruminate and think. They go, the devices throw you into a programmable trance. Your brainwave cycles reduce, as you see on the chart here. And instead of being in a higher vibration thinking, you go into the TV programmable state. Just so that you understand, our vehicle a few classes ago read some of the uh, quotes about the inventors of TV in the early 50s, and they said, wow, we never imagined that it would be so effective, but I would never let my children near it. How do you like that? And then someone else, a president of a university, said, in the 50s, in the 50s, some of you were not even born then, he said, if we continue with this type of programming, we are headed for an ignorant, dumbed-down country. And that was the innocent programs in the 50s. He was commenting about, what about the trash, the sexual trash? The movie stars, the music, all of this trash that people gravitate to towards entertainment. You know what people used to do for entertainment? Women would get together, make things, do things, and talk. And then they would see, after they chatted and had a good time, that there was something that they made. That is a hint. Get people to make things again, whether it is potluck suppers, that everything has to be cooked from scratch, not running to the store to bring a bag of chips. Or to get people together and make things and have discussions about the changing world. You will attract the people. Oh, absolutely. They are ready. Do you understand? Yes. People, especially people of color, are ready to understand that you have been sold a bill of goods as victims. And yes, you, you participated in a huge movement of, of slavery. Huge, huge. But you know, there's a man today who wrote a book. His name is Michael Tellinger. 
and he wrote a book called Slave Species of the Gods. His contention has valid, very valid point, is that everyone on the planet, in some manner or another, is a slave of these sky gods. And these sky gods are the creators of every religion on the planet. And most of our religions have you praying to a cross. Well, these sky gods, the name of their planet is Nibiru, but also planet X, which is also a cross. And it, their planet is known as the planet of the crossing. So there's not a religion out there that is not calling in and praying to these devious Anunnaki. Better think about this. Yes, cucumbers. They might be a good uh, thing to get together and make a batch of cucumbers or pickles. Easy, quick, inexpensive, nourishing, fun. You can have good conversations around something simple like a pickle. I have one more question. Go ahead. Um, you talked about uh, the sky gods and what do uh, anything might that have to do with uh, the movie being a new movie coming out called Independence Day, The Resurgence? Is that maybe pointing to the so-called return of Nibiru? Nibiru? Uh, that's a very good point. Someone else brought that up recently. Uh, was it Jean or someone? Or someone that was a teacher, actually it was Marcella, uh, and she was uh, bringing up uh, the idea a couple classes ago that all these invasion type or ET movies are coming out and she teaches young children and the young children are, are very frightened and confused. So yes, movies, uh, uh, the Hollywood industry is run by the military and uh, by many what you call considered to be uh, Jewish people. There's a great uh, agreement there uh, to condition people uh, for what's coming. And there's plenty of speculation that if it's not the return of Nibiru, uh, then you are certainly dealing with the return of something that is about regime change and recognizing that there are forces that will appear, whether it's sooner or later, and this could be a 50-year window, just so that you understand this, of 25-year window, let's say, um, to reveal to the world uh, some type of uh, rulership. Of course, it will all be very deceitful because the Anunnaki have a history of um, pants on fire. That's the best way to say it. We call it the Pinocchio effect as well. In other words, they're not honest with you. And of course, part of the genetic engineering that has happened to all people is a dumbing down or a tweaking of your psychic abilities, your ability to read someone and to know exactly if they're lying to you or telling you the truth. This is the greatest restoration that is required so that you do not fall prey or sway to your political leaders who continuously lie to you and deceive you. And if you can't figure out which political leaders are lying, how are you going to do it when these gods show up? And they may show up as superhumans. Uh, speaking of movies, all of these superhero movies with these uh, super abilities these are also running two programs. Programs that are affirming to you there are beings that have capabilities beyond the normal human. And number two, the genetic engineering of super beings, whether they are artificial intelligence or what's considered to be super soldiers. And then, of course, there is the secret space program that is already employing uh, uh, men and women with advanced capabilities, but these advanced capabilities are put in f as weapons. It is the weaponization of humans 
that is around the corner. Best bubble up, buckle up, and get really clear, folks. You are not stuck in a doomsday scenario. When you get clear and you see through things, you help pop the bubbles of illusions. And believe it or not, you can be having a pickle party and um, you have 10 people over and they all got their cucumbers and you are going to make dill pickles and sweet pickles and you're talking about world changing events and you're doing something and you're laughing and having a good time making these pickles and putting out a vibration. And once you figure things out and people go, ah, oh, that's what's going on. Wow, that's what's going on. Those frequencies go out even to the heart of capitals around the world and then they change the course of events. This has been the contention of our work that in the quietude of your own bed thinking you change the world because as you start to awaken you are not going to be fleeced at least from the things you are realizing. And that puts out a very big signal. And the more people who start to realize things, you change the probable course of events, meaning that there is no predetermined future that everyone is stuck in. However, understand that you are not going to change the seasons. And if Nibiru is headed in, you are not going to suddenly erase it from the skies. But what you do do is you change how you deal with things. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if it's a summer day and you say, I am so powerful, I'm going to turn this summer day uh, into winter. You are not. This is delusional. So everyone, be very aware of where you delude yourself into what you think you are going to change. Yet we are telling you, you do change things all the time by simply thinking about things and seeing through them. Does this help everyone? Yes. 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 Good. Any other questions? Please. Who is it? Loud and clear. Please, this is Jeannie. Jeannie, all right, welcome. Thank you. Um, how does Scientology fit in to all this? Well, if you look at Scientology, they are using the same Anunnaki code systems. You understand? And L. Ron Hubbard, uh, who was the founder of Scientology, um, he claimed that you are controlled by another planet and uh, the gold was so important and uh, they've got a gold center in Hemet, California. And it is deep manner of, of mind control, very, very deep, with rewards, of course. Uh, they talk about getting audited and getting really clear uh, it is another branch. It came out of uh, the post-World War II uh, era. What would it be, 60 years ago or some such? The World War II era, atom bomb, all of this Nikola Tesla on the planet. There was a big battle uh, for who was giving who information. And do not think that uh, smart people uh, sit around uh, and invent things. Certainly, uh, whether you are a physicist or a theoretical this or that or a mathematician or a radio astronomer, once you have a predilection for studying such things, the forces out there give you ideas. It is not so much different than we coming through our vehicle and speaking to you, although our vehicle does this very publicly. Many people receive ideas from unknown forces and they think it's their idea or they keep quiet about being told to do something or shown something or they're given it in a dream. And good forces against other forces that may be not so good will battle it out and the non-physical, in your terms, to see who they can manipulate and control as a marionette in the physical. And this Scientology, uh, a form of a form of MK Ultra, would have come out of the same window, Jeannie. And it is 
banned in Germany, you know, which is very interesting. And more and more exposés are, are coming out. You know, lots of people uh, will sell their soul uh, just to have wealth and fame. And this is very, very big in the Hollywood movie industry. Many people know they are compromised. They don't care. And many people lead uh, a lifestyle that they don't want the world to know about. Uh, so they are perfect to be uh, set up as a puppet. And then their lifestyle is secretly uh, uh, supported. Who else has a question? Please, this yes. is Dorsey. Dorsey, welcome. I know a while back uh, you had mentioned you you had mentioned about heroin is going to be the next. It's going to be the biggest thing that's that's going to be of uh, I guess destroying people. Yes. And I read an article the other day. They're talking about how he they said children now more vulnerable than ever to heroin, and they said a lot of them being tricked at the age of eight with heroin. They said make sure that parents don't let them take any candy or to let the kid know the candy is not wrapped or sealed good, do not take it. And they so also, heroin is being laced onto candy. Right. And they said also that statistic is that 12 years old is now the average age for the first exposure to heroin or for, for children. Well, Dorsey, as usual, you've done your homework and you always bring up a, a, a painful a situation that is occurring in society that many want to ignore. So we salute you for that. Now, a few things going on here. Heroin addiction is definitely on the rise. And you understand that this heroin uh, comes from the poppy plant. And it was uh, George Bush number one who was called poppy. and. Uh, he began this incursion, as you well know, into uh, uh, the Middle East, uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, all of this. And it appears that then his son took up the bandwagon, George Bush too. And now uh, you have soldiers guarding poppy fields uh, all over that part of the world. And to the reason there's so much war and contention there is because this is where the heroin comes from. And. Uh, in the Vietnam Wars, they were bringing back drugs uh, from Vietnam uh, in body cavities. And of course, this was discovered and created all manner of uh, problems, which we will not go into now. But certainly, there were uh, stories about uh, the Dr. McDonald's and all of this who found that out. He's still in prison to this day, accused of killing his family because he, he figured out the drug trade. But it's coming from the far regions there, and uh, this is why the soldiers are there to protect and guard the poppy gardens. Now, parents have become too disconnected from their children. They want to be liked by their children, so they give their children everything they want. Cell phones, much TV, TVs in the room. It's so common today, it's not even considered a treat. But uh, in the 50s, if you had a TV in your room, you had to be a multimillionaire. Do you understand? Today, everyone's got screens uh, unmonitored. They can look at pornography all they want. But they don't even have to. They can just turn the TV on, the movies, and watch the degradation. And parents are too busy, too busy talking to their friends on cell phones to even understand what the children are doing. The breakup of the family has been completely successful. And of course, as these things usually work, there will be a boomerang effect, a blowback effect, and people will, many people, will start to recognize that there's no future ahead unless you really start making some rules and taking some responsibility for yourselves and your children. Heroin at eight years old. Listen, heroin at any age is a, 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 a ruinous situation. And all you have to do is look in the newspapers now and again to look at the obituaries. And once in a while, a family will have the courage to say, our deceased child 
a beautifully deceased white child often at 22 to 26 years old did themselves in with heroin drug overdose very 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 common and a shame of course but good parenting starts from the time children are born and today everything in society wants to separate the family and have teach children to confront their parents to sue their parents even so these are important things to look at the bigger thing is what are you going to do about it what else Dorsey what other important things have you come across because we have about one two minutes left well I'm not just I remember I read this article about we had just a statement there was a sign that said about we did not have Wi-Fi it was at a restaurant or a small business and it said we do not have Wi-Fi they announced that and they had a sign that said we do not have Wi-Fi talk to each other you see, this is, this is the good news. This is the good news. This is why our vehicle says no devices in here. Meet each other, talk to each other. If, if you are so busy that you can't go for a few hours without a device, you don't need to sit in our classes or to be around us. You are nuts. <laughs> we have an even better view of it because we can see the cognitive failure. And, you know, there are studies that are being done all over the world, but they're being covered up about the use of Wi-Fi, what's our nickname for, uh, uh, what is it called, Wi-Fi. Our uh, other nickname is WeFry, that is more appropriate, WeFry. Uh, studies are showing that if you operate one of these WeFry devices before 20 years old, yipes, right? you will never fully develop your brain. And what are they doing in all the schools? Bill Gates, computer, Wi-Fi computer, Wi-Fi computer in front of every child. This is all to create uh, uh, this, this cognitive failure. And when you have people who can't think and can't critically think and question, then you have slaves. Actually, it's volunteer. Be a slave. Volunteer to be a slave. So that you don't think, but that you become an unquestioning worker, not even capable of thinking or critically or even politely inquiring about inconsistencies. Someone cares. This is called cognitive failure. All right, let's have, though, a cognitive, exciting recess now. And uh, we'll give you about 15, 20 minutes and then come back for the second part of this afternoon's double header. All right, the gong is reverberating. We are here once again to continue uh, this afternoon's uh, double header, as we've called it. So, you have questions uh, on recess here about the political nonsense and Hillary, or we call her shrillery. Uh, we like nicknames now and again, you know, and she is rather shrill, uh, has difficulty modulating her voice. And then there is the burn, all right? So there's the hill, the shrill, uh, the burn, uh, and then the trumpet. And as uh, Jean was saying, what choice do you have? And of course, this is what uh, the globalists uh, want you to think you have choice because uh, Donald Trump represents the people's voices, remember. This is who the people want, not who the party wants, but what the people wants. So what you are seeing is a lot of posturing, a lot of pretending a lot of acting as if while the people are taking over they want the trumpet and there's nothing we can do about it. Understand something. A person recently, perhaps someone who would be in the know, uh, stated uh, that the trumpet would never have been able to 
succeed and go this far if the military, some branch of the military, and some branch of the alphabets were not behind him. We would say, from our point of view, you are in a coup. Some may call it a silent coup, a quiet coup, uh, a covert coup, a confusing coup. Uh, but you are in a coup. A coup is a takeover uh, of sorts. And uh, there was a big coup in this country around uh, 2011, the 9-11 events were absolutely uh, a taking over, not only of the mass consciousness, but of certain aspects of the uh, USA and world governments. And then on the first part, we were talking about this coercion into climate change, and climate change being a, a bit of a code uh, for uh, the potential uh, arrival incoming chaos uh, and destruction uh, that uh, a planetary body uh, could possibly create uh, with its large tail of detris as it enters your solar system. Hence, as many uh, have come to speculate, the uh, impetus to build massive underground complexes uh, all over the world. So what choices do you have? Uh, what do these people really represent? Who wants to make some comments on this? Because this is uh, very relevant to what's on everyone's mind. Uh, Jean, you want to start? Um, can you rephrase what the question you're asking? Uh, just a commentary on uh, what the political situation is presenting to people? Well, uh, for me, it's just presenting something where, you know, you just really stop and take a look at, I mean, ideally that may not be what's intended, but, you know, just what is going on between these two people, like why is this who we have left seemingly to choose from? That's it's a good like way. Like there's nobody that you can get even if you don't maybe ideologically or politically really agree with him, at least say, well, that's at least he's decent people. He's you say, oh, at least that's a decent person. I, I respect his opinions. But there's just something else. Like these people, it's like they're both so weird. It's like they're what is going on? Well, it, it is true. Uh, Hillary can get up and uh, blatantly lie. Uh, she announces herself as, I'm a real person. Uh, that's a very strange thing to say when she doesn't even know how to drive a car. That's out of touch with reality. How could you be the champion of regular people when you yourself don't drive, don't know how to drive, don't know how to, let's say, do some of the very basic things, let alone the number of lies that have been uh, attributed to her and the, the criminal things that go back to uh, the early years when she first uh, met up with Bill and they were uh, two, uh, let's say, high-flying, high-intended uh, selectees. Uh, it was arranged marriage and um, it was planned way back. Uh, that they would be put in position uh, in Arkansas and then eventually uh, into the White House. Uh, because they both came from not much money, so to speak, not like the other uh, entitled, uh, let's say, sons and daughters of, of patricians, uh, they were eager to please. And of course, they both had uh, sexual, sexually ambiguous uh, activities in their life that they wanted to hide. They were perfect, perfect to be blackmailed. And there's plenty of evidence that uh, even uh, the child that they claim to have together is not Bill's daughter. So deceit all the way around. And then the bigger question is, as you look at symbols, how have a country that prides itself on choice and freedom and uh, uh, bravery and all of this creates a situation where you have a communist, Bernie, he's pretty much of a communist, 
everything he's promoting is a, a form of socialism or communism. And if you study communism and socialism all around the world, you begin to realize that everything for free, uh, no mortgages and uh, no, no free education and free this and free that, after a while it doesn't create a very high standard of living because if everyone's going to have something for free, everything has to be scaled back so that everyone gets equal. You understand? Equal. So it's big social engineering and uh, Donald put himself into position through his own money, uh, but uh, there's more going on. As Jean, you know, you found that uh, that uh, he first ran for president on The Simpson Show uh, in his own Trump Tower escalator. So uh, one has to question that. Uh, who else has a comment on the political situation? Christopher. Christopher, yes, welcome. Uh, thank you. Hi. Uh, I just want to add to the the trumpet's uh, qualities as president. Um, he's the owner of the Miss America pageant. Yes, Miss America. Uh, which would suggest that he's part no, of that. Miss USA. Miss USA, thank you. So he's part of that, um, uh, how do you say, drafting candidates into the MK Ultra trade, the, the sex trade. Yes, because there's a tremendous amount mm -hmm. of. Uh, of placement uh, of beauty contest winners then becoming girlfriends or wives of other people who are deeply under MK Ultra, but they might all start off vaguely programmed uh, and so you can follow this tracking everywhere. That's a good point. What else, Christopher? Um, also to be remembered is that he owns casinos and hotels in, in uh, well, across the United States, but principally in Atlantic City. Atlantic City, so gambling. Gambling, and I would imagine that offers the opportunity to, when he receives uh, high profile people in those hotels, to know what they're doing. Well, of course, because uh, in today's high profile hotels, uh, in other words, $500 a night and upward, uh, you are going to have very sophisticated surveillance. So as a, as a uh, type of power broker... Uh, oh, the trumpet has the dirt, the dirt, the dirt. He's got the films, he's got the recordings. And once again, being part of a quote, silent or quiet coup is a better word, a quiet coup, uh, he, he, he does not have this momentum and this kind of backing if he didn't have some insider uh, uh, encouragement, uh, protection, etc. Mm -hmm. As was said, he could only go this far with backing by certain branches, and the operative word here is certain, branches of the military and the intelligence agency. And we will say this because these military and intelligence agencies are largely uh, populated by the male species. What testosterone charged up man wants to take orders from Shulery? Truly, you, these people are career people. They're not going to take orders from someone like her. They, she is detested far and wide by people who truly want to restore America's values. So this is, what else, Christopher? Yeah, I've lost a thread there. But you, you have me thinking now about the, the divisiveness in, in our culture and the male-female division is being pushed forward. Very much so, because there it is, uh, Hillary claiming to be a woman's champion, yet going after viciously like a pit bull. Uh, that's not fair to the pit bull, but we'll use it anyways. Uh, going after the women who are appalled at Bill's behavior. So she, she's a fierce attack dog. And then number two, you have the trumpet, who then feels quite comfortable 
slamming women and, and looking at them as, as sexual beings. So yes, women and men would be very confused as to who's on whose side. And so they are being very divisive, very, very divisive. And Bernie, what do you think of Bernie, Christopher? I, I don't understand. I, I think he's thrown into a peas. Oh yes, he's 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 the catcher yeah. to make sure that a certain batch of the uh, voting population feels that they are being heard. Mm -hmm. Understand this? Yes. And many of his points are completely legitimate. <clears throat> it's just that he will never be able to execute them. And he's a socialist. And again, as we've said, uh, whether it is Sweden, Norway, Denmark, whether you are talking communism in, uh, in Venezuela or, or uh, Cuba or, or Soviet Union, or Russia, whatever it is called now, it doesn't work because it is attempting to make everyone feel as if they are taken care of by the state. And the last thing you need to do is to have a nanny state that you are dependent on. It weakens your volition. Because you see, it's one thing to have someone give you a car, put you through college, uh, pay for your wedding, uh, pay for everything, versus the self-improvement to go after it on your own and the satisfaction and the reward that comes from doing the job yourself because you want it and you work for it. There's a tremendous amount of gratification and confidence that comes to people who achieve, even small things. When you take achievement away and you give everyone the same pablum, which is what Bernie wants, then the whole society is disempowered. And remember Bernie spent his, his honeymoon in Moscow. How many people aim to go spend their honeymoon in Moscow? Well, Moscow's lovely, but uh, nonetheless, Bernie is a comrade. So be clear about that, that Bernie would represent higher taxes, more and more intrusion of government, uh, and then the, you want the government to stand up to Wall Street. It's ridiculous. The government is Wall Street. It's not going to stand up to Wall Street. So Bernie, uh, with bringing up good ideas, is still deluding people. So you have, as you said, no choices. What else, Christopher? Uh, well, one last thing about the trumpet. Um, early on, he, he brought out a campaign kind of imagery. Uh, very On the surface, very patriotic. There was an American flag blowing the breeze and his portrait. He does have Venus, we believe, in cancer. Um, so that's very patriotic if you understand the astrology. And uh, layered within this imagery was a soldier marching behind, in the background, marching behind the flag. Uh, as it turns out, the company that put that imagery together for his campaign used a Nazi soldier in the background. Um, and How did they make that mistake? Well, that's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, it was blamed on a young graphic designer who was fired. The young always <laughs> get blamed. <laughs> <laughs> But having worked some to, in graphic design myself, I know that that's not what happens. You know, the image would have been vetted. Of uh, course. It has to be agreed upon. Of and, course. But it makes a very easy fall guy to blame it on the young graphic designer. Well, let's, let's recapitulate. You have someone who is a socialist communist, the burn. You have the shrill, who is criminal. And then you have the trumpet, who is, uh, let's say, leaning towards fascism. None of these situations really embody what your country is all about. And just to give a little more um, snippet on the trumpet, he seems to 
always look for explosive topics. And recently, a few days ago, he gave an interview with a commentator by the name of Sean Hannity. And in this interview, uh, as the Hannity person was uh, recapitulating uh, Bill Clinton's uh, crimes against women and, ra and all these allegations, as the, the host is going on naming the allegations, uh, Trumpet pipes up with rapist. And on the mainstream news, millions of people, Trump reiterates that Clinton is a rapist. Then another show, we believe it was Rush or some such, uh, right around the same time, goes on to say how uh, Bill Clinton uh, had many undocumented trips uh, to uh, Porno Island. It's not the name of it, but it's got some name there that this uh, convicted pedophile named Jeffrey Epstein uh, has an island in the uh, Bahamas, uh, the old peaks of Atlantis, where uh, he brings in world leaders to have sex with young girls and probably boys and all, all, all the rest. And uh, that Bill Clinton has been uh, cited as making uh, too many trips to this uh, porno island. Uh, and this is coming out on, on mainstream situations. It's getting nasty. It's getting very, very nasty. And yet, it's the truth. It's the truth. It's not an exaggeration. It's actually an understatement of how dark the political scene is. Caution, confusion ahead. That's basically the warning that we are providing today. Caution, confusion ahead. No matter what you think something is, it could be completely switched around. May this. Offer, yes, go ahead. May I offer one? Um, under the George W. Bush years, uh, I think most of us became aware that Cheney was influential in creating the policy of that administration. Yes, in other words, he, he was really behind the scenes right. uh, uh, running the show. And I suspect that we we're being given, offered this dismal choice, but the person who will really be in power will be either a Secretary of State, a Vice President, or some other person in that cabinet. Whoever is elected, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's, we should look at whatever the cabinet that, that person puts together or vice presidential candidate or, or someone else who is actually uh, controlling the power. That would seem logical, and yet logic does not always rule the day in these, in these coming times. Again, the trumpet may be settled upon and used to create a certain agenda that is far beyond the trumpet's understanding of reality. He is not super sophisticated on policy. And he's only having meetings now that are informing, um, informing him of things. And there are many workings uh, inner secret workings inside the USA that he would be completely outside the loop of. Uh, Hillary may know certain things, but she does as she is told. That's, she is a complete obeyer. Do you understand? Yes. She follows to the T and will not rebel. And then there is the other contention, too, that uh, the O's despise the C's. That's the Obamas and the Clintons. They really don't care for one another. And even recently, Biden came out and said, a few days ago when Hillary was having her not so very good uh, week, uh, that actually was